It is extreme in a lot of people's minds. It's changing people's vision. It's changing people's understanding of uh, ministry and missions today. We weren't ready to give up, you know, our lifestyle. You know, we like to go out a couple times a year, maybe drink a little too much. Knowing we were sinning, but being happy with that because, you know, sin's fun. <laughs> Money was my number one priority. That's all that mattered. Real materialistic. And uh, drugs, alcohol. I cussed like a sailor. <laughs> I did. I mean, I could shock some people with my mouth. People look at me like, do you kiss your mother with that thing? And for us, our life was status quo. We were just kind of floating through life. We thought that's how it was going to be. I knew what I was supposed to be doing, and I wasn't doing it. You're constantly strapping yourself, and you, you, next thing you know, you need that extra income to keep from going, you know, bankrupt. So you have a, yeah. We would fight over the drinking or things that were going on. We fought, I yelled, I nagged, I did everything that you would expect a wife to do except pray. We needed some help. Missions is nothing more than taking the gospel to people that haven't heard it before. It takes place here in Mansfield, in Loudonville, in the Dominican Republic. It takes place in Ukraine. One of the best ways of evangelism in terms of reaching new people for Christ is to begin new churches. We began as a new church. The district helped supply pastors and speakers, and then we began to grow and develop. And then as we were growing, we said, if we're serious about evangelism, then we have to figure out a way to get into church planting. I knew uh, there was something big was going to happen. I knew it. We had a number of people that didn't even know each other that were calling our church and saying, we really feel like there's a spiritual need in Loudonville. When people realized that they could have a personal contact in this church plant, it really became meaningful to them. And so they were eager to be a part of it. I just envisioned people being broken free, the chains of bondages being broken, and, and, and just a freedom to let the Holy Spirit run. My parents moved our family to Loudonville when I was in eighth grade. We really feel that finding Charles Hill as the pastor of our newest church plant was really a divine act of the Lord. And not only were they looking for a church planting pastor, but they were hearing the rumblings of this little town that needed a good church. And they tell us we have a burden to plant a church. We were born and raised in Loudonville. We know the community. We know the culture. It just seems like that's the perfect fit. The only place that we could meet was a small church that we had bought that was very traditional. It had pews, it had chandeliers, and we needed to do some extreme things to make this church look like it was contemporary to the audience we were trying to reach. It was absolutely amazing what these people did to help us make this transformation, which truly had to be extreme. Well, we tore down walls at the pastor's office. We took that out, made it a coffee room, tore up carpeting. We saw people there working on stuff, tearing stuff out, taking stuff in. We knew something was going on at the church. We were struggling to really find a place that we've, that we've felt was a church home. I watched as Todd and his family drove around the corner every single week and my heart just went out to them and other families and I thought that's exactly the kind of family we need here at New Hope. I felt like there was a huge void in my life until we found this church. We needed the food, the spiritual food. We just didn't know how or where to get that. By the end of the first service we knew that this is where God wanted us. We knew that we had to reach out to our community and let them know that we were here before our grand opening, so we designed a postcard mailer to go out to the community. Everyone in the group knew that these were going to touch people that God was calling. I walked out to the mail and uh, there was this postcard, um, New Hope, which the name in itself, New Hope, sounded pretty good. I was ready for some something different, something uh, new. Rod and I talked and we decided, well, we'll start taking the kids to this church and we'll see what happens. Rod stood up in front of our congregation giving a testimony. I came to New Hope first for my kids and I ended up being the one that needed it most. Once I started going, I realized it wasn't about the kids at all, it was 100% about me. We got the postcard in the mail and there was an article in the newspaper, we kind of talked about it, ended up going. We would tried different churches before, everybody in the family found something wrong with every church we ever went to. And so we just never went. And then we went to New Hope. And that's the first time I've ever look forward to going to church. It didn't seem like people were being fake. It just seemed like everybody was having fun. I didn't even know what it meant to be saved. And how can you go to church for 36 years and not know the essentials of being a Christian? From personal experience, I know what it's like to not 
be discipled and not be taught how to follow the Lord. It's very necessary that we had people like the Blackwells that came from Berean. We couldn't have done this without them. He's kind of leading me by the hand and teaching me what he knows. And it is a commitment, but it's a, it's a worthy commitment because you know that if a person only picks up what they pick up on a Sunday morning, they're just going to get a fraction of what God's will is in their life. I can't get enough. I need, I'm getting discipled during the middle, you know, every other week, but it's like I need it. I need more than just once a week. It's just, I just want to keep going and going and going. He gets home from meeting with Norval, and he and I will start discussing things that I think has drawn us a little bit closer. As a new Christian, I want to share this with everyone. All this discipleship is just reinforcing every word that I say, I can back it up with scripture. It does take an extreme step to help disciple them so that they can then grow to be the leaders that we need at New Hope. It's just awesome to see how many people have been encouraged and, yeah. and their lives have been changed. The dramatic change that I've seen in the Morgans has just been absolutely what Christ talks about when all things become new. 18 years of nagging and yelling at my husband about alcohol, it only took me two months of praying. There's just something inside me that said, it's not right and I just don't have the desire to do it anymore. Rod and Trish Edmondson, I've watched them mature into one of the top leaders of our church. Rod uh, works with our greeters out front and Trish is uh, one of the cornerstone people involved with our children's ministry. I look forward to it. I can't, I can't wait for Sundays. I don't think there's been a sermon yet where I haven't had a tear in my eye or been choked up about something. Never been in a church where I wanted to be involved. And I've found that with this church that I do want to be involved. And I'll never forget the first or second week here as, as both of them raised their hand to trust Christ. I baptized Todd and Jen shortly thereafter. And they are some of our strongest leaders here at New Hope today. Our lives have flipped, <laughs> really flipped completely. And had New Hope not been planted there, right. I don't think we would still be in church. I really think that's the only way that our community could have been reached. It's about reaching out to those people who you know need Jesus, and it's the only thing that's going to change their life. When we decided to uh, uh, stop focusing just on ourselves, but focus on the world we live in, God has done some exciting things. Churches all over are starting to realize that, uh, that church is not just about ourselves, it's about people getting saved and then making a commitment to follow Jesus Christ and serving within their church and then, and then ministry, missions in the world in which they live. That may be the extreme step. I want them to have a church like I have one. Bless every one of them that helped to get that going down there because it's changed so many lives. There's a lot more of us out there. We're just, they were just waiting.